Welcome everyone to um, Free Gamps at Webinar 12. This is the last webinar just before your exam. Um, we are going to have our final webinar um, just, uh, I think, mid-September for the, or uh, well, the final Free Gamps webinar, sorry, uh, for your interview preparation. But today's webinar, um, uh, it is uh, lead up to your September exam. So the September Gamps that is two weeks away. Um, not long to go now, so please contact me for a free consult uh, to prepare a study plan for the upcoming exam or for those um, uh, members or uh, enrolled with Institute of Medical Education, you can contact me for any last minute uh, thoughts or anything um, or study plan. I mean, two week study plan, realistically, I usually say you should spend the last week of your gaps at relaxing and maybe just some light reading, some light writing or typing um, but generally, now is the the go button. Now is the time you should be consolidating the, um, uh, I guess, the topics and stuff like that. You, If you're cramming study now, you probably didn't study properly. But I mean, with GAMSAT, it's exhaustive, right? You can prepare as much as you like. Um, but <laughs> as you're aware, for those who've sat GAMSAT before, you can prepare as much as you like. You sit the exam, you're like, I don't know anything. Um, so that's the nature of the exam. But don't worry, as these sessions in the past have shown, the specific techniques you can employ um, to pretty much any of the questions for section one and three, um, because they're all structured very similarly, which you'll see again today. And there's little techniques you can employ to at least help you narrow down the correct answers. So... As I alluded to earlier, medicine interview prep um, season is upon us. So offers for interview hopefully should get released, I'd say, next week. Um, usually they're released in the past. Um, they generally release end of August, early September. Um, but it's something to think about if you feel as though you're going to get a interview offer. Um, with GEMSAS, I mean, the other schools have already released. I think UCIT's already released. Um, their offers for interview recently. Um, and I think Flinders will be releasing this soon, or they've already done it, I can't remember. But again, interview season is coming up for postgraduate medicine. Um, and if you are serious about your interview prep, um, Institute of Medical Education does provide a mentorship program um, for those who want to um, excel in their interviews. And um, we also are offering a virtual workshop. So most of the medical school interviews for postgraduate this year are going to be online. I know a few of them are. So we are going to offer a virtual workshop. It was successful last year and the year before. Um, so there, our programs are developed by doctors who've sat on these panels um, for med school interviews. So um, they're definitely the best kind of, um, well, it's a full day workshop. Um, it's definitely the best preparation you can get. So you go through practice questions, you prepare as an interviewer, an interviewee, and you get feedback from our staff. And it's an all-around great day. So if you can attend, please um, contact us, let us know, and we can sort something out for you. Um, look, the interviews, I say this a lot, are worth 50% of your offer to medicine. Um, so why would you take a chance um, you know, some people spend years preparing for GAMSAT, which is only worth 30% of your offer into medicine, whereas your actual interview is 50%. So why would, you, why would you leave the chance? So just think about that. So today's session will focus on Section 1, Literary Passages, and Section 3, Rate, Law, and Kinetics. Um, uh, I, I picked a, a nice passage from um, an old school passage, but it's, uh, it's, I'd say it's an infamous passage, um, which a lot of you may be aware of, might not be aware of, but it's uh, going to be cool when we look at it soon. And rate law and kinetics is something I love to explore with students because it's something that throws, I mean, the trailing wheels fall off when we get into rate law and kinetics. Um, but I'll show you some tips and tricks again today on how you can address any questions regarding rate law and kinetics when they come up in your exam. Um, so again, just a reminder, these webinars are recorded and you receive a link to access this and previous seminars via our mailing list. Um, 
Otherwise, you can find our videos on YouTube if you search Institute of Medical Education. Again, this is the second last um, free webinar uh, of the series. We started this exactly a year ago. Um, it's been a success. Lots of students have, um, again, the whole reason why we um, released these free webinars is because, um, look, it's it's hard enough. We want to make look. We want to make this equitable for everybody. It's hard enough for a lot of people to prepare for exams. So it's expensive to apply for exams, to apply for material courses, and not everybody is privileged enough to have access um, to those. Which is why we release this free series, just to give those who just don't have the access to enrolling into programs and exams and all this sort of thing to at least get a taste of what to expect. I mean, if you do, um, if you do have the money and um, you're willing to invest a small amount of money to prepare for your GAM, so you can contact the Institute of Medical Education. We can help you there. But um, these these programs are, when we started them a year ago, meant for for those um, who just want to get a taste of what the GAM set is all about. And for those who've attended over the last year, they can definitely attest to the fact that it definitely has probably helped them guide their preparation for the exam so it's great to see everybody who's attended and um, participated um, so that's why we do it I mean we love teaching we love education we love helping everybody out um, so no matter how rich um, or uh, uh, how much money you have so it's all about helping out those who um, need the help where it needs most so um, note just before we move on, our academic partnership with Studio Education. Um, Studio Education, we run classes on the Gold Coast to help high school students achieve top scores in university places for competitive programs. So um, uh, if you do see Studio around, uh, they are a partnership partnered with us, the Institute of Medical Education, but they do focus specifically with secondary education. Um, but it's all linked because secondary education, undergraduate medicine entry, um, and they're all kind of intertwined together. So um, it's great because it's post-COVID, um, trying to get in-person classes for um, students, especially because a lot of students, high school students, as well as university students, the last few years study has been absolutely thrown over its head because of the COVID pandemic. But now we're trying to get into in-person classes again. So if you're interested in excelling in your year 12 exa exams, give us a call, Student Education or IME, give one of us a call. We can point you in the right direction and help you out there. Um, so you can follow um, and find all our material. We've moved the Institute of Medical Education pre-medical material onto studio.com.au. Um, if you just look up Institute of Medical Education or Student Education for our socials as well, um, you'll get a great glimpse of um, what we're about and lots of free material um, and lots and lots of um, uh, resources to help you with the exam. If you do want to come and have a chat with us in person, you can find us here in sunny Gold Coast. It's warming up. Um, it's beautiful weather here today as well. Um, so you can come down, just give us a call beforehand so we can accommodate you. We'd love to have a chat with you. Um, so today's session, literary passages and rate law. And just go through any questions you might have um, at the end. Um, so are, are you there with me, Jeremy? I'm here, ready to go. Ready to go. So look, we do have this passage here. Um, it's taken from Machiavelli's The Prince. It's a 16th century formal and systematic instruction guide for new princes and royals. Are you familiar with Machiavelli, Jeremy? No, I don't believe I've I've read any of Machiavelli. Okay, so you're gonna notice after we um, explore the question, there is two questions. I'll start the poll in a second, but you're gonna get more of a sense of who he is. I know in the past, I think in Asa does have a practice question on some of Machiavelli's work, but they don't tell you it's Machiavelli. Um, they say it's an old 16th century writer or whatever. The reason why they don't say that is because if you knew who Machiavelli was, you could answer these questions without even reading the prompts. Um, so this is, I told you who Machiavelli was because I know a lot of people don't know who he is. And this is just for educational purposes today. But for those who do know who, who, do know who Machiavelli is, and you probably would recognize his work, because I remember there's a question Acer did release 
can't remember which exam they released, practice exam. Um, it has a Machiavelli type section one question. See if you can find it and write it in the comments below. Um, uh, because I do have a, when I saw it, I was like, this is a Machiavelli. This is Machiavelli, 100%. And I looked and I was like, it was. But they didn't say that because if if they said it, you'd answer all the questions without having to read the stimulus. But today, here's a stimulus. Um, what I'll do is there's two questions. So for those playing along at home, we've got one and oops, two. Yep. So there's those two questions. You can pause, pause the screen here or pause the screen here. Um, but for those playing along today, um, I've got the poll. Remember, section one, about a minute 30, a minute 40 per question. But because there's a bit of a text here, I'll give you, so what, three minutes? I'll give you three and a half minutes. But if you're finished, Jeremy, just let me know. Um, and uh, we can we can move on from there. So to give yourself about three and a half minutes, um, your time starts now. About 15 seconds, I'll move on to the next question for those playing along at home, but you're fine to keep going, Jeremy. So you have about a minute 45 to go. So for those playing along at home, we have 30 seconds left, but Jeremy's finished. Um, how did you go with that, Jeremy? I'll just end the, the poll now. Are you there, Jeremy? Yeah, I'm here. So how, how did you go with that one? Oh, I was a little bit worried about time, to be honest. I didn't want to go over time. And mm. so I do, with the time pressure, I find myself getting flustered with whether you know i should uh, take a systematic ap approach to like each paragraph identifying the topic the main the main idea of each paragraph and um you know and you know trying to 
analyze that. But then times I find myself going, well, there might there's only time to read it once and you know answer the questions with what you feel is the best um without having to to go back and and analyze it if there's just there's just no time then i find myself having to just go okay from i read it what do i feel like is the best answer from mm. thinking about what i remember from the passage um, so, so from reading the passage, do you, what do you gather about Machiavelli? What do you what are your thoughts on him? Um, one of my thoughts. Because so is he the author? Of well, this? Machiavelli is the guy that wrote this. So just to give you a big a background, so Machiavelli, so the Prince. This is, um, it's a political writing by an Italian. So Machiavelli is an Ita- Italian diplomat from the sixteenth century. Um, I think he was born for 15th century, died in the 16th century, but this was published after he died. Um, and it's, he's a political theorist and it's an instruction guide for new princes and royals. So the general theme of the prince is of accepting that the aims of princes, such as glory and survival, um, can justify the use of a moral means to achieve those ends. So it's, it's infamous because it, it's considered one of the, uh, modern forms of, uh, sorry, it's the first works of modern philosophy. And, um, it kind of goes against the Catholic teaching, um, because you had to be unethical in the way that you acted. Mm. So I guess you can argue that Machiavelli kind of, um, uh, wrote the manuscript on how to be a ruler. Let's put it that way. Despot. Did you get did you get that vibe from this? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely about dominating and and ruling, maintaining your mm. like obtaining power, and so the prince, you know, prince is royal, you know, monarch, um, you know, uh, um, oligarchical, I guess, and so. But yeah, the monarch are like someone in control, a despot and tyrant. All these words come to mind. And go, okay, we're we're trying to well, it's like it's a bit didactic, like trying to teach the reader how to be a prince, a, a an aspiring and dom- dominating prince, what to do with your land which land to conquer and how to conquer it. You, you've so, got it exactly. That's exactly how I would describe it. It is definitely didactic because mm. it's teaching you. It's teaching you how to rule. So I think you've got it. How, so what's the tip you can give those watching? How did you – so what did you do when you tried to uh, – because you, well, you said you were time-pressed – to try to read all of this and answer? What did you do to get extract as much information out of these two paragraphs? Oh gosh, it's just because, um, what's the word like superfluous or like they just mm. or verbose the the amount of words in this paragraph? I just feel like it's there was just so much to try and read, and mm. it was a little bit hard because um, it's not that it was a higher register like with vocabulary, but it was just there was just a lot, and the, a lot I don't of know, the, in, right? the grammar it was a bit archaic or like I. It's just not like a everyday colloquial way of talking. I don't know if you if that is. Yeah, you, this you comes off as very. Um, it's very academic in the sense that it's it, it's written by somebody who. I mean, this was obviously translated from Italian. Um, so it's it's yeah. an Italian person who wrote this. But um, what did they? Wait, did they write in Italian or Latin? I can't remember back in the fifteenth century. I'm sure. Sorry, part of my ignorance. Oh, um, um, English, English was like French, um, or, and that's sort of the um, Germanic languages. At least I know for certain that French and English was mid fifteen hundreds. Mm, that's when this, it originated. This, this was Italian, so they they they, they um uh, what's that word? They um. Have, don't, from I don't think it would be in. It would definitely wouldn't be in English. I think but, that was, it was because, just because Machiavelli himself. No, it wasn't English. It was translated from Italian or Latin or whatever the language. But Machiavelli himself was a diplomat, and back then, 
um, I think he was from a wealthy family as well. They were very well educated. And for him to write like this, I'm not surprised because wordsmiths were easier to come by back in those days in wealthy mm. individuals because they had some of the best education. Um, so today, oh. it's, 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 uh, it, it makes sense. It is, there's, a lot of, there's a lot to take in, as you were saying. It's a lot of um, intellectual, well, the, intellectual words. The, sen- the sentences, you know, sometimes they're, they're a little bit complex, complex like uh, or, or long, like longer sentences than, you know, they're not like doesn't, simple doesn't sentences. It, and doesn't it read like he's tooting his own horn? Yeah. It reads like he's just like, listen to me. I'm right. This is what you should do. But he's saying it in a very, what's the word? I don't want to say in a very wankerish way, but it's that, that sort of way. Or, um, I had it. I had it. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Definitely trying to, um, inflate sense of self there. Um, you know, because this is again just his view, but the, to get to the point, it's like how, like the answers. It's strange. I, I just in some way, I just intuitively like the answers felt right. Mm. Um, well, so let's just start with your first answer. You said that. Uh, sorry, my pen I didn't go. do as much. What do you call it? Um, uh, oh, like the um, uh, cancelling options, you know, like um, what do you call it? You just picked from what you felt, but I if, just if read, we, uh, yep, I just read them all and picked the one that sounded right. Um, mm. so let, let, yeah. let's go through it then, actually. So, I think in this instance, what I would do is generally when you're getting big passages of text, what I like to do is this is my technique is I like to summarize what is this paragraph saying, what is this paragraph saying, and why are they different? So that's the quickest way. So what do you reckon, what's the what's this paragraph about? Mm. So they're both about ruling people, right? So they're both paragraphs about ruling people. But what yeah. is this paragraph specifically how is this one specifically different to this one i think you can look at it in let's say um you can this is a big hint well see yeah the, the see, it was, i was is, actually I, I wasn't able to um articulate the concise summary of the first paragraph but mm. when i read which of the following would you know would he find objectionable mm. I didn't feel like it was in the first paragraph. I went, I, I then then went to the second, and um, I just read that the basically this first sentence that says, if it's you know, um, if you know they're not the same people, they're not similar people to you, then you need to. Where does it say? It says. Um, you need to reside there. There you go. So the third third line yep. down on the second paragraph, it's basically should go and reside there. And so that to me was like the the gold nugget of mm. okay, if you you you're ruling from afar, well, no, um, you can if it's similar, but this isn't similar. So there's that two parts there. That's okay. What about so it's what happens when it's dissimilar and then can you rule from afar or do you have to rule there? So you're um, correct. That's that's all it needs in the game. So sometimes that's all it needs, that gold nugget and you found it. Yeah. So and that's how I did that. It. That's how I got that one quickly. It's just I I went a little bit of backwards, um, mm. where it's like, okay, reside like you gotta live there. Rule, rule there rather than afar. As soon as I saw that from afar, I then went left and went, okay, dissimilar. Yeah, dissimilar. And I just felt like that was the right one and just chose it from, you know. Because yeah. I, I just, yeah, thought it just seems so, you know, 
if there's only a few seconds to go, I was like, all right, click that one and just submit. So I didn't, you know, completely cancel out all the others. Um, because I, I, if I admit, and annexations was not really familiar to me. So well, I thought, oh, God. Familiar, the annexation itself? Like as in what yeah, do you the mean? Word, the word. So, so annexing the state? Annexing, annexed, yeah. The, so that that word really is not um, in my, like, immediate okay, lexicon. So. Okay. I um I had to I had to like look it up after afterwards. So sure. afterwards, that's all right. <laughs> no one's no one's uh, judging. No one's che- judging. Yeah. yeah. Disputes between large and well-established nations. I I don't know about that. Like I mean, large and small. It. I don't think size. I didn't. I didn't get anything to do with size on here. It was more just. It was more just like how similar they are. Um. Wars of independence initiated by smaller states. I also don't, I couldn't really find why that. You, why would he find it text? questionable? You know, so with, with, with Machiavelli, um, so with the two pa- passages, the two paragraphs, you can just see with the buzzwords here, the first paragraph is telling you, um, so, so dominions. So let's say you're oh, trying okay. to acquire a state. Yep. So the whole idea is it's easier to acquire a state where you're you have the same language and the same you're the same country pretty much. So they use the exam example Brittany, uh, Burgundy, Gascony, Normandy, all part of France, right? It was easier to conquer those lands because they all spoke they all spoke French, right? Mm. So it was easier because they had the same values, the same um, language. So it was much easier to annex them. It was much easier to control them because structurally they had the same political structures, the same cultural structures. So it was very easy. But what he's saying, that's the first paragraph. The second paragraph is saying, so how do you do, how do you control a land where there's different language, custom and laws? How do you do it? You should reside there. That's how you do it. And he uses the example of the Turk in Greece. The only reason why the Turks could control Greece for so long was because they had a Turk in Greece ruling from Greece, not from Turkey. So the whole idea of this paragraph is is saying that the only reason why the Turk succeeded in Greece was because they had a Turk in Greece ruling from there. Because if you had somebody from afar, where is it? Um, He would attack the state from the outside, must have utmost caution as long as the prince so as long as the prince resides there, it can only be wrested from him with the greatest difficulty. So the idea is if you lived in Turkey and you were controlling Greece, your country would have been eaten up because you don't have the same uh customs, laws, or language. So the people living in Greece will just uprise, they'll just pillage the area and take everything. But if you live there, it's impossible for them to do that because you're controlling them from the site. Mm. So that's the whole idea. So that's what the arguments were. If you, you just looked at those key, again, it's like scanning. When you're scanning the text, scan quickly what they're trying to say. You only have a short amount of time. You did it perfectly, Jeremy, because you got the answer and you did it because you found the gold nugget. Um, but when you look at the question, when it says, which of the following by Machiavelli, um, oh, sorry, would Machiavelli be likely to find objectionable? Um, so clearly, it would be conquerors of dissimilar states ruling from afar, as said here. But the reason why you can knock off the rest is because it says annexations of previously picked. This is all about how to control land and control people. Um, no, yeah. no matter whether they're peaceful, small, big, it doesn't matter. So don't worry well, that's about why, that. It's, that's why yeah. I crossed off. I crossed off the first one because even though I wasn't quite confident on the word annexations. I read peaceful societies and I was like, well, I wouldn't it's, object. It's just yeah. like, who would object to ruling a peaceful society? Doesn't make and sense. Like if you're, if you're in the business of controlling, then you want to be a peaceful society because they're easy to control. Mm. Um, so then you've got disputes between large and well-established nations. Um, yeah. That doesn't make I sense. If anything, this tells you, no, he wants to say, look, Turkey and Greece. Those are large and established nations. Like he mm. w- wants you to do that. 
but that last one uh, i mean if you again if you are trying to control then wouldn't you be obje objected um when you object to having wars of independence of your small states or like uh, isn't that where your um dominion like are getting are trying to dissent and fight you like uh, isn't that what is what is that also, saying because it, it, it's kind of given away here where it says war of independence initiated by smaller states look at how he's talking glowingly of how Brittany, burgundy gascony gascony and normandy came under the control of france because they're easily able to get amongst themselves that gives it away that this is wrong because he's not he doesn't find it objectionable that you're trying to um take over smaller states he finds it awesome that you can take over smaller states because they have similar customs, similar language. So that's why you can say he doesn't have a problem with it. He wants the wars of an okay. independent states initiated by the smaller state. He wants that because it means that you can amalgamate everybody together under one rule. Mm. So if we move yeah, on I to guess. the second question, it says Machiavelli pre presents, you got this correct as well. The answer is D, matter of factly. But you must have done process of elimination, surely. I I think I I did a quick. I didn't write it down. Like I, you know, um, previously on practice tests, I've been trying to have a go at actually drawing A B C D and crossing them out on the page so that it's you know I'm actually putting it down on physical, crossing it out rather than trying to keep it in my head. But to me, I I feel like I just. Again, it was a time pressure. I thought, just just choose one. What's the best sounding one? Um, and it didn't seem illogical. It seemed like he was, you know. So does it sound like he's I deranged mean, to you? Yeah, like. I don't think so. Getting, yeah, no, like. The points seem to make some sort of sense. Like it's not, you know, I didn't, I didn't critique with a fine comb, the logic of it all, um, because it was like, there was a lot to take in. So, but I just thought, no, it seemed, it seemed like he was trying to make, he was making points. It wasn't just, you know, there, there was some sort of logic there. Euphemistically. So euphemism, is trying to make it sound he, better. Is he, is, is he Do trying you, to make this sound you know, rosy no. and stuff. No, he's being very, yeah, very. I don't, blunt, there wasn't really it? any sort of praising of of the annexing and domineering. It was just it was a bit more, a little bit ob, um, like objective, a little bit, yeah, like was, just was, to the point, he was stating facts. So, and that's why I was like, yeah, it wasn't really exaggerating as well. There's no like, mm. I couldn't really find any words of exaggeration, and so matter of factly, yeah, just like. Yeah, this is this is what you need to do to yeah, be a tyrant. Couldn't be hyperbolically as well. There's no hyperbole here. There's no hyperbole anyway. He's not exaggerating anything. He's just being straight to the point. He's being blunt. No, yeah, it's not like because it's not like he's saying you'll be able to conquer the world or like you know mm. stuff like that. Um, and, so, and what you said as well, it's very didactic. Yeah, it's very in a te he's trying to teach you. He's teaching you how to control land, how to control. Remember, he wrote this for royals. Mm. He wrote this a systematic. It's a systematic instruction guide for new princes and royals on how to rule people and rule territories. And if you think that kind of gives it away, like why would he write something funny? This is for royals at the time were the the heads of state. This is well, yeah, something. Like it's an it's there's definitely some instructions because like again that gold nugget there of he who has acquired them should go and reside there like that's a, an instruction so because it's so instructive i thought okay yeah it seems like i'm trying to like not but yeah tell you what to do but then it's very similar to teach i guess and so yeah if that if didactic was an option like if they were talking about the tone then that might be the right answer 
So, but I only came up with that because I went through the tone. I went back over the the modules in IME and made a list of the tones um, and the rhetorical devices. And yeah. so, yeah, no, it's been good. Good thanks going back plug, over that, those modules. Thanks, thanks for that plug. Um, also, for those playing along at home, um, this is important to know. This is ask. The question is asking how Machiavelli pre- presents his own ideas. This isn't how you perceive. This isn't how you perceive his ideas. This is how Machiavelli himself presents his own ideas. So why would Machiavelli present his own ideas illogically if he's trying to tell you what to do? He's presenting it very formally. Um, so I do employ all of you, you too, Jeremy, if you do have the time to read um, Machiavelli's The Prince. It is an amazing piece of writing. I'm not saying it's amazing in terms of what he says is true or what he says is correct. It's just amazing to see how you fast forward from, this was published, I think, 15, 20, 30, I can't remember exactly, 40 when he, after he died. 600 years. So 500 years or five, 600 years after this was published, it's still to this day is relevant to politics today. And it's still to this day relevant to how politics was practiced before him. So it's insane. It gives you an insight into the human mind, human psyche in terms of control, domination, and um, uh, this idea of how you control the masses. I think it's an awesome piece of writing. Um, I, I employ all of you to read it, please. It's It gives you an insight into whenever you think about, you know, the 1%, those ones who are at the top, the ones who control, You, if you read The Prince, you'll look at it and you'll be like, hang on, all these rich and famous people are employing the same things that Machiavelli himself has been saying from the past. They're doing it today. It's rinse and repeat. So I think it's quite awesome um, if you do read it. Um, So we've got some Jeremy um, posting some extra relevant words. So hubris, pompous, pretentious, arrogant. Um, So do you want to tell us what you mean um, by those, Jeremy? Uh, I think you're on mute, Jeremy. You can unmute yourself, Jeremy. Sorry, you just posted um, extra relevant words, hubris, prom- pompous, pretentious, and arrogant. Yep, yep. Oh, sorry. I just, I was out for a moment. Um, yeah, I was just like, we were talking about earlier about um, Machiavelli yep. and a, a bit of, how this is sound how he sounds writing like this and so yeah i just sometimes if i have a few different words in the same sort of area it helps me to lock in the words if i can definitely yeah think of synonyms then i can remember the actual word itself so Mm. pompous Um, hubris they they are definitely relevant to this he you know when this was published it is infamous for a reason when this was published it was condemned from the get-go like this, this, this publication for hundreds of years was kept, well, obviously because the Catholic Church ruled the land and they didn't want this out because it told people to act unethically, to control mm. the lands and the masses. You have to be unethical. That's the whole point. Um, it's not about being nice. It's about doing what you can to stay at the top. So I, I would employ all of you to have a read, but we will go move on now to. Uh, section three, rate law and kinetics. Um, I'm sure you've seen this before, Jeremy. And let's see how you remember um, some kinetics here, because um, we're going to go through two questions for those playing along at home. Um, on I, I, I like to think this is foundational kinetics, rate law type questions. If you can understand this and do it through the ways that we're going to go through in a second, you'll pass any question relating to rate law kinetics unless they give you a graph which is another topic in itself but um you should do well um what i can do is i can you get two minutes per question there's two questions so one two so i'll give you four minutes 
Um, for those playing along at home, and Jeremy, I'll just start the poll now. Um, are you there, Jeremy? Are you ready? Yep, ready to go. So I'll start the poll now. You have four minutes. And I'll, I'll just, when it's two minutes has elapsed, I'll change the question to the next one for those playing along at home. I'll move on to the next question now. Sorry, Jeremy. Um, in the poll, just ignore the blocks. Um, the blocks are a bit funny, but I'll just go to the next question. So for those playing along at home, um, I think Jeremy, are you ready to go or do you want to reflect on your questions? You do have one and a half minutes to go. I are think there, I've, I've done two questions. Is that are there any more or there's just two. There's two. Um we can stop there's it now. Two. Okay. And we can talk through it. Um, for those playing along at home, um, give yourself another minute and a half. Um, you can pause the screen, but we'll go through the answers, Jeremy and I, just in obviously the interest of time. Um, so, so right, Law, walk me through this, Jeremy. So you should be an expert. So what are you, um, what are you, what are you seeing? What's this table telling us? Oh well, what's great about this table is it's showing um, the change in the rate of a reaction uh, when A is constant and we change B and if B is constant and we change A. So I started with A and I was like, okay, if we maintain B as constant, then we can go from experiment three to one so we double one, sorry. We, so you maintained A as constant, you said? I know. If we maintain B as constant, so okay. we can determine yep. what what A's relationship is, mm. then I go bottom up, the bottom to up. So we go yep. experiment three to experiment one. We've doubled the concentration of A. Mm -hmm. So this is and now what, yep. what happened to the rate? So the rate basically went from like two to eight. Mm -hmm. So it's like four times when we times A by two. So two A equals four R, um, which so is, So you can yeah. write it as two to the power of X equals four, right? So what is, so let's just say that X is going to represent um, the, 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 the number of which it's going to increase by. Or whatever mm -hmm. we're going to say, right? So if we mm -hmm. kept, if we keep B, so it let's, this is, we're trying to find, um, in this instance, we're trying to find uh, A, yep. X. So we're trying to find the X for A is equal to use this equation. So as you said correctly, um, we've got here 
if you keep B, let's just keep B constant. We're looking for A here. Once you double A between the experiment, you see that the rate quadruples. So once you double A, it quadruples. So the X is going to be relative to the amount um, needed to make a quadruple. So the answer is 2 to the power of 2 equals 4. So we know that A is going to be first, second, or third order reaction. So it's going to be A squared, which is second order. Second order, yep. So what about B? Yep. Let's do – so for B, we have to keep A constant now. So which one are you going to keep constant? So to keep constant – a, we just use experiment one and two. Yep. And we can go top to bottom now. So mm -hmm. we go experiment one to experiment two. We've increased B by four times. And then we, like, if we really just general, um, what do you call it, just estimate it from, like, as 0.8 is one and it's... I don't know. It's like it's like we've gone with the rate has gone four times, uh, three to four times as much. And I went, I just went to about four times. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe it's it's close to four times the amount. So if B was raised four times and and the rate was increased by four times, they're you know they're equal then. So that. Yep you change B, it's an equal change in the rate. So, Yep, so B is going to be B1. So it's going to be is, yeah. A2, B1. So the answer is going to be which one? Uh, answer B. Yep, correct. And it's a now, third order. Um, if you, if you add, yep, so it's a third order reaction, which is perfect. So that's the next thing I was going to ask. So... Whenever you get, so usually in the Gantt, you'll get questions like, so just before we dive into it, actually, for those who are confused, um, so with rate law, um, uh, usually you're going to use this equation, rate equals K, um, so times the concentration of X, Y, or whatever it is, to the power of N. So that's N is the order of the reaction. So keep that in mind, and K is the rate constant. So you've got rate, rate constant, order of reaction, and that's the concentration of your substance. So you can see here, when we were doing these equations, um, we were doing, uh, if you do this every single time, you will never go wrong. So I always do it, if this is, let's say we're doing A again, uh, let's say keep um, A, we're looking for B, keep A constant. So you have to look where you can keep them constant. And then you want to see the changes in the other um, substance or solution or whatever it is. And you can see it's quadrupled. And over here it's quadrupled. So I usually do 4 to the power of x equals 4 quadrupled. So whatever x is, is going to be the um, order of reaction. So in this instance, it's 1. And over here in this instance, it was 2. But when you're asking for the order of reaction for the whole system combined you just got to do two plus one equals three so it's a third order reaction now remember what we discussed i think last week jeremy in um in the webinars for ime um in terms of so where do you with a zero order reaction um what's a zero order reaction usually what's the characteristic of a zero order reaction well, if you have to do any graphical analysis, you would see if um, the Y is change in concentration mm -hmm. and and then X is the, the, the rate, mm -hmm. um, it would just be like you would see a straight line. There's no uh, – it's oh, hold on. Or there's one one that's a straight line. So well, I, it's a I straight think line the, down. The first order reaction would be something like – that yeah, yeah so that would be straight like down that. this is this is a zero order mm. this would be first order i mean this would be first or second order it depends um but remember how do you know the difference between a first and second order if it looks like this what's the big diff uh, again watch out for the axes they might trick you they might make it a logarithmic axis uh, let's yeah. just assume it's 
um, the rate versus the concentration. Um, let's sorry. Let's just assume it's concentration versus time. So this is going to yeah, be time. Sorry, time is at the bottom. Yeah. Yep. So this is concentration. This is time. And let's just yeah, assume so this is sorry. Then time, the, gra this the is gradient is the rate. Yep. So we're looking at the gradient, and because the gradient doesn't change with change in concentration we know that yeah so whatever we do to a it's like to our um chemical labeled a it doesn't affect the rate at all with because it's not affecting the gradient so it makes sense because if you look at it rate so for zero order reactions rate equals k and let's say it's x to the power of zero that equals mm. one right so it's going to be rate equals k so that's why it looks yeah, like so this. Just, that's, that's right. why you know a zero order is going to look like a, just a um a linear line when it yep. comes to first and second order the trick if you do a concentration versus time graph the trick to differentiate between first and second order because they both they both can be curved the trick is remember with first order we went through this last week what was it jeremy with first order what's a, something you can spot on the graph that gives it away its first order First order, it um is uh, like exponential. This this exponential decay. It it's always equal. It's equally there's an equal amount of time between each half. Like the the time it takes for it to um, half half of it to be removed. Like the half life for those listening. You know, half life then. Yeah, the, the half -life time is what? That... What's that word? The C word. Half life is a uh, decay. The C word. Is it... Half life is c -c 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 constant. Constant. That's right. Yeah. So the, the half life, -life is not time. Changed. <clears throat> the, constant yeah. Over time. So if you so... you look at the half, well, like on the y axis, you go to the half, and you measure out how much time that took. If the exact same time is taken to reduce another half, then you know it's it's likely to be first order. That's right. So first order reaction for those watching, if you can spot it on the graph, if it's a concentration versus time graph, um, the easiest way is to look for half life, a constant half life. So um, that's the big difference. Second order reaction doesn't have a constant half life. First order reaction does. And the, the big way to see is, uh, as you said correctly, Jeremy, let's just say the half-life is 10 seconds. That means to go from 100% to 50% concentration, it takes 10 seconds. To go from 50% concentration to 25% concentration, it takes 10 seconds. To go from 25% concentration to 12.5% concentration, it takes 10 seconds. So you can see it in the graph. You should be able to discern that from the graph. Second order, not as easy, but you know straight away if it's concentration versus time and you don't see a constant half-life, it's second order, second or third order. Um, so you know it's not going to be first order. Zero order has to have some sort of linear line. The trick also is um, they might give you log concentration rather than concentration, and that might give you a... A linear line and that might trick you or that might give you a straight line be careful of the axes mm. if i was you um and we've went through this before with Jer jeremy last week um in our classes if i was you memorize every single freight law graph whether it's concentration versus time log concentration versus time rate versus concentration rate versus time Analyze every single type of graph you can get. You can find them on Google. You can find them online. Memorize them because it will make your life so much easier when it gets to the GAMSAT. That's my best advice I can give you. Um, yep, you could also get um, natural log, straight line for first order, one over um, concentration as well for second order. There's a lot of what you're saying correctly, Jeremy. There's a lot of different... Um, mm types of graphs graphs you can develop please go on google look them all up different types of rate gra rate law graphs and different variations of the graphs 
study, understand why they look the shapes they have, and it will make it so much easier for you. Now, if we move on to the last question, this is a mathematical one. Um, you are close, Jeremy. The answer is 50. But could you just tell me what you did? Because with this question, to find K, for those playing along at home, we know that the rate is, the rate for this reaction is, so K, A A squared, B. So what would you do that, like, so knowing this, what would you do to find K? Wouldn't it? Oh, I mean, it, it, it's pretty much going to be rate divided by these two. But um, yeah. so I mean, you... that's what I did. I tried. I just chose uh, chose one of the rows. So I did the th- I did the third row for some reason. But it doesn't matter which row you do. They're all the same. So I was like, okay, zero point two equals k times two squared or uh, point two squared. Oh. I might have done two squared. <laughs> That's probably why. I might have you, converted. You had five. I might have converted them all to like two squared times one t- uh, equals you know two or point two. So it's the decimal points that got me. I think because you got too quick, but you you had the good thing is at least you recognize this. If you can recognize this, you're there. I think what happened was you just got time pressed and um, it just, that's what happens, right, in the GAMSAT. I can guarantee you now it's not going to happen again in the GAMSAT coming up in two weeks. Wow. I'll, I'll be watching those decimal points. Like, so a trick, one trick that I'd use is like, if it's 0.2 times 0.2, well, two squared is four, mm. but to do, to make both of them two, you had to move the decimal point twice. Mm. So then you just go, so you put four down and then you move the decimal point twice mm. to get 0. 0.04. Mm. Um, 0.04, yep, sounds right, yep. 0.04 is the same as four by 10 to the minus two, yep. So that's how I... I when I when I do uh, recognize the decimal point, that's how I do it. Mm. You just you can take it away and then bring it back. Um, for those for those watching at home, I can I can show you how I did it if you like. Um, I mean, I'm going to show it anyway. Um, but you'll see again if you're systematic, it's harder in the exam because you're time pressed. But sometimes it's better right. to not rush the math. Um, you're right. It's probably it's probably good to to if you have it all in one, like if you bring it from the start so that it's rate over a squared times b, and then you use you 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 put it into a scientific notation, it might actually be you know a lot easier. So you do two times ten to the negative one at the top. Is that how you is that was that your approach? I picked experiment one. So for the for those playing along at home, um, it doesn't matter because all the experiments are linked. So you can pick any one. Experiment one, two, or three, you're going to get the same answer. So it doesn't matter. When it comes, this is why rate, because the rate is constant, right? The rate is not going to change between experiments. It's the same. Um, you can see it's just involving, it's the, involving the same reactants, A, B, and you're going to get the same data. So it's not going to change, right? So the sorry the um not the rate doesn't change the uh the the k doesn't change sorry because the rate constant doesn't change it's the same throughout that's the whole point um so what i did was i picked one so i just converted everything to scientific notation so four by 10 to the minus one one by 10 to the minus one 8.5 by 10 to the minus one then i just substitute it into the equation let's just substitute it into here so rate is 8.5 by 10 to the minus 1 equals k, which is what we're looking for. So a squared, 4 by 10 to the minus 1 squared. Then over here, we've got 
1 by 10 to the minus 1. So that's what we have. I might want to fix that up. Actually, it looks a bit weird. Okay. So what I did was I cleaned it up. So what's 4 squared? 4 squared, 16. Yep. So 16 times 10 to the power of... So generally remember with um if you're multiplying exponents what are the, what happens if you're multiplying exponents what do you do to them Uh you plus them you add them Oh well, sorry these these are not exp you're not multiplying two exponents because you're so this is the this is why I said that because it's confusing oh, because sorry. you're doing oh. four, 4 by 10 to the 1 times 4 by 10 to the 1 that's what you're doing. Oh, yeah. So you're, yeah, if it's, well, if the exponent has an exponent, you you multiply them. Yeah, so negative 1 plus negative 1 is, but you've got it the same. So it's the same thing. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is? Oh, it's negative 2. Yeah, I mean, the same thing. I mean, this one is where you could times it, actually. It makes sense. Um, so negative 2, and this stays the same. So we've got, um, therefore, let's just do this then. Let's times this. So 16 by 1 is? 1. 16 by 1 is? Uh, 16. 16, yep. By 10 to the power of minus 2 plus minus 1. Minus 3. Minus 3. So now we've got mm. this. So 8.5, so we can put it onto this side here. So now we've got um, this equals k 16 by 10 to the minus 3. So there's a, there's many ways you can go about this. I can show you a quick way, and I can show you a different way. So there's two ways you can go about this. I can do it as, um, if you want, I would move the, um, so let's make it k equals, so we can move the decimal places here. If you want, this is going to be, uh, let's just say, if you want to, let's just say you times it by 100. For argument's sake, let's times this by 100. So what's 8.5 by, so 0 0.849 times 100, what's that? 100, oh, it's 85. 100, no, no, no. Huh? 8.5, oh, wait, sorry, um, times it by 10, sorry. Um, not 100. What am I saying? Wait, 0 0.85. It's it's late late Friday. My maths, my brain. Lucky I'm not in the oh, game. So it's I... 10 times 10. Sorry, not 100 times 10. I just got rid of the 0. 0.5 and it it worked well for me. Like, you know, I mean, I ended well, up with, it, yep, I ended up with the 8.5 times 10 to the negative one divided by. That's 16 times 10 to the negative 3. Mm -hmm. And I was like, forget about the 0. 0.5. Let's just go 8 over 16 because it's, it means two, it's yeah. just 1 over 2. Mm -hmm. It's half. That's and right. So then I was like, all right, it's a half. And then we know that if you divide expo like exponents minus now, if they are... Mm. Yeah. One is divided by another. Mm. So like sorry, 10 times 10 to the negative one divided by 10 to the negative three will be 10 to the negative one minus minus three. So minus one plus three. Yep. Which is plus two. Plus two. So you you just go half times ten to the plus ten to the two. Yep. Which is going to be? Well, then you go, oh, okay, well, that's 0. 0.5. And then move the decimal point to two places and so it's, it's 50. 50. Yep. So it's the same way as doing this. So sorry, what I said earlier, scrap what I said earlier. It's the same way as just saying, let's make, because this is 8.5 by 10 to the minus 1, let's make this the same unit. So 16 by 10 to the minus 3 is the same as saying, um, so it's the same as saying, uh, it's going to be, if we've got minus three, put it, it's going to be one decimal, two decimal is, yep. So it's going to be 0 
1, 6 by 10 to the minus 1 is the same as 16 by 10 to the minus 3. Um, so for those of you getting confused, it just comes down to practice with your exponents and your um, exponent rules. So it's mm -hmm. the same as, so then you just have to do, if it's 8.5 by 10 to the minus 1 divided by 0 0.16. So they're the same units, so you can get rid of them. So it's just going to be K equals 8.5 over 0 0.16. You could say that and then be like, well, um, you could say, therefore, 9 divided by, it's around 9 divided by, um, sorry, reciprocals. Remember, 0 0.16, the reciprocal of 0 0.16, remember your fractions. It's about, it's about 6, right? So there is, yeah. Reciprocal of 1 over 0.2 is what? You should know this. It's a... Jeremy, are you there? I think your mic's off, Jeremy. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's, it's 5 over 1. Five, yep, so that's the reciprocal. The reciprocal of, that's 0.2, is 1 over 0 0.15. I think mm. it's around 6, I'd say. It's about 6. So then you can say, therefore, 9. So A equals 9 by 6, which is like, what, 54? There's an easier way than this, if you got confused. There's also, I did it this way. I did... Um, so if we just go back here, so we've got 8.5 by 10 to the minus 1 equals K times 16 by 10 to the minus 3. So you just got to bring it along and say, I'll just clear everything. Actually get my... Anyways. Let's just say K 16 by 10 to the minus 3. Okay, just ignore all those numbers. K16. Yep. Get the penny out. So by 10 to the minus 1 equals K16 by 10 to the negative 3. So you just bring it along. So K equals 8.5 by 10 to the minus 1 over 16 by 10 to the minus 3. So you can do this for me, Jeremy. What's Let's just say 8 divided by 16. You said it before. What's that? <clears throat> Half. Eight and of, then yeah. um, this, this is what you went through as well, Jeremy. So by 10, so minus 1, as you said earlier, minus minus 3 is? It's 2. 2. So there you go. So move the decimals and 50. So that's your answer. And that's you. Well, that's how you got it. I showed the confusing way, you showed the easier way, but just for those um, playing along at home, there's many ways to peel an orange and there's many ways to get to the answer. So that's why the answer is 50. Um, so just remember, just please don't get confused. You do get paper. Sorry, it's hard for me to write. I'm using a mouse. If I had a pen, it'd be so much easier. Um, it'd be so much easier if I just write it. Oh, wait, is this touchscreen? No, the other one was touchscreen. Um, but it's not touchscreen. <laughs> but you get the point. Um, please get comfortable with um, scientific notation, exponents, logarithmic rules. I'm guaranteeing you, you're going to need to use scientific uh, logarithmic rules, scientific notation, exponents, algebra, calculus. You're going to have to use it in the gaps that are coming up. I can guarantee you. I'll give you my house if it doesn't come up. I'm guaranteeing you. The same way I can guarantee you, you're going to see something related to um, uh, stereochemistry is the similar stuff that always pops up in the GAMSA. And the reason why ASA asks these questions is because they're the questions that each students usually struggle on. They love to ask questions that you struggle on because it's easier to differentiate between candidates. So if you can be an expert in those topics, you'll pretty much kill it in the exam. So we'll leave it at that. Um, how was that, Jeremy? How are you feeling now? You did very, very well. How are you feeling now for your prep? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Uh, obviously, this you know, a couple of uh, errors, just 
methodological errors or you know, time pressing as well. Yeah, just dealing with the time pressure. Um, yeah, if I can avoid those small mistakes like misreading that. But see, this is, see, it's another, we found a gold nugget here where while it might be, it might be good without time pressure to, to do the method where you remove the dot, the decimal and then bring it back. If, you know, to keep track of everything, it's probably best to just use the um, scientific notation. So, yeah, I, I did wrong. like that idea. Just don't reinvent the wheel. You can't go wrong. Just yeah. learn how to multiply, divide scientific notations. So remember the rules, if you're multiplying, you just have to add. If you're dividing, you just have to subtract. So that's that's a rule to remember as well. And logarithmic rules are important um, and those sorts of things. And it's good. Again, Jeremy, you're, you're smashing it. So you're in the zone. There's two weeks until GAMSA. I think if you just um, remove those little... What do you want to call them? Those those yes, eagerness is... tendencies. Those eagerness tendencies. Sometimes it's better to, um, to 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 be pragmatic and follow the process. Um, sometimes you maybe you just want to be quick, but there could be errors involved. So you find that balance. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's no dilly dallying. There's some haste, but mm. just. Yeah, it like just have faith. It'll, if you just think of the question, go about it. Um, you know, like you, as long as you can keep track, because there, I have had in the past where I got so engrossed by one question on an, a test that I spent half the time on this question when in first year at uni, and I just wasted all my time because I. I did so much study that I had so much to offer for this question, but I should have just gone, hey, look at the time, you know, mm. just try to put something for the others. Um, so, yeah, what do you think about the looking at, um, you know, I've heard about doing 20, what is it, every 30 minutes that you should do 20 questions? You know what? what sort I, of... I would follow something like that. If well, yeah. let's just say section three, right? You get seventy-five questions in one hundred and fifty minutes, yeah. which means at at the seventy-five minute mark, which is the halfway mark, you should have completed thirty-three questions. No, oh. that's wrong. Sorry, thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. My goodness, my math is terrible right now. 37 and a half, so 38 questions. You should have answered 38 questions by the 75-minute mark. Yeah. I would look at it that way, only because some questions do require more time than others, and some questions do require less time to complete. Mm. So you might have leeway there. Mm. But use it as a guide, um, because you always hear stories of people in the games that, um, oh, I didn't answer the last 20 questions. I had to guess. That comes down to time management. You don't want that yeah. to be an issue. Um, yeah, because that was me. Last time I, I had about six questions to go and I couldn't answer them because the time you know, was you up. Know what, six minutes to go on a Gamsa is a good effort because some people don't even get to that point. <laughs> so six questions to go, I think, is fair enough. But if you're mm. somebody who said, oh, I had 15, 20 questions, didn't answer, I had to guess at the end, time management needs to get improved. So mm. I, I can cop six questions. I can cop that. Um, well, the first the first time round, I had time, like two minutes to spare, and I was like, oh, quick, just go a, go through a couple that I needed to go through. So I was shocked that, yeah, I just definitely got stumped by one, talking about maths to that tonight, the, the, there was a lot of maths in the last one, and one was like the – Units, unit conversion, or different types of standard international units. That's right. Yep. And so, yeah, I might have to look into that again. But definitely, then, because yeah. you 
you, those mm. are the questions that Matt, honestly, from experience, because, you know, obviously the GAMSA is weighted and um, it's, it's um, uh, what's that word? Everyone is standardized in a way that certain questions have more weight than others. If you can get the mathematical questions correct, it will scale you higher than other students. And I'm saying that because maths isn't everybody's expertise. Um, some You just have it or you don't for some people. And physics, everyone always says physics is the worst. I can't understand physics. So if you can do well in the mathematical, the hardcore math sort of thing, um, your score will skyrocket. Um, if obviously you maintain a good position and good answering and of the standard questions like the biology and chemistry, but the the mathematical type questions, the, those are the ones that trick students. Um, so if you can get those, definitely I would look into that in the last two weeks of your study, Jeremy. I'll definitely look into that. And Thanks, uh, do you have any other questions, Jeremy? Sorry. Um. Well. Or comments. No, I- I, I think it's I think it's all good. Uh, I'll, I, I we, we have like a webinar to... tomorrow as well. Don't we have another webinar tomorrow? So for those yeah, um, in IME, are you going to be attending that one or are you busy? No, I've shifted work, so I'll, I'll attend that. And oh, I thank oh. you very much for that. Actually, I didn't uh, expect you to do that, but um, it's I'm going to make sure it's going to be worth your while tomorrow. I would like to sign up for the interview because I. I nearly did it once and I just, because it was in my last, it was in my semester period and I couldn't take the time to have a, have that time off from uni exams and stuff and then attend the, the interviews. But now I've got time. I definitely want to try that day where, um, you know, is it on the 8th? You guys are doing or yep, the yep. 9th? Yeah, so we're you guys doing are- virtual so virtual interview on the 8th. I'm sorry, we, we are doing in person this weekend, but the, it's closed um because it'd be too late to register for the weekend one because it's only two days. Um, But that's why I pushed um the virtual one, which is on the 8th of September, which is a Friday. Um, yeah. The issue for some students is it is the first day of the GAMSA. So we'll see how you go because I know you'll, you will receive your ticket for the GAMSA soon. Let us know what day you get. If it's not the eighth, perfect, you can attend. But don't worry, as a um, a Jeremy, as a you're a premier member, um, you do get access to the workshop. Um, I've been anyway. through some of the questions, which is good. Yeah, so you will get access to it if next year anyway. Um, also, if if you do it, if your enrollment does expire, you do get access to it if you get an interview. Um, so you do, you're allowed to do it. So don't worry about that. I mean, if you can't make it, but if you can, fantastic. Um, the more, the merrier, and it'll definitely be worth your while. Um, I was going to say just to close as well, for those interested in the virtual workshop, we'll be running it now last two years. It's been such a success. Um, a lot of students who've got into medicine have literally said, if it wasn't for the prep, we're not geniuses. We're not. I'm not going to sit here and say it's the golden bullet. The reason why students love it is because medicine interviews aren't what you think they are. If you haven't sat the medicine interview before, um, it's not what you expect. It's not a job interview. There's certain quirks you have to um, know of to be able to, to perform well. And that's what we try to help you in the workshop. So it's a four-day workshop. You get to act as an interviewer and interviewee. There's 20 MMI questions. We go through, you get feedback. So it'll be all around great day for you. Um, so if you can attend, fantastic, let us know. Um, but we can have a chat tomorrow again, Jeremy, about that. But um, I'll leave you to it. Gab's that in two weeks. Good luck. Our last free webinar is going to be on the... 14th of September, we're going to go through practice interview questions on the 14th of September. And um, for those in IME enrolled students and candidates, we've got webinar mania going all throughout the whole September. Um, Finish rounding off August as well. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven webinars coming up over the next six weeks. So we've got a lot of webinars, a lot of sessions to go through. Um, so uh, it's going to be fun. So thanks thanks a lot for coming along, Jeremy. Thanks for those watching at home. If you have any questions, just post them in the discussion board. Um, if you're part of IME, if you're not, just comment below or get in touch with us and we'd love to help you. 
Thanks for your time. Take care, Jeremy. Yeah.